Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm reporting to you from the newsroom of KOMO Television in Seattle, Washington, for In the Line of Fire, a program, a look ahead at the 2023 wildfire season, as you all are very keenly aware of. They have become increasingly wild, increasingly unpredictable, and the devastation has increased as well over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, it seems like anyway. I'm pleased to be joined by 10 true experts in the field of predicting the weather, the science of the weather. These are meteorologists from uh, our various stations in the Sinclair Broadcast Group. These are stations across the West in Utah, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, the state of Washington, on down into Oregon and California. What I'm hoping we can do is get kind of a bird's eye view from all these various markets about what the wildfire season has looked like, what they think it will look like here in this upcoming summer, and also as it pertains to the winter, the wet and snowy winter that we've just experienced. So these are the experts. We're going to get a conversation going here. 250 years of combined uh, meteorology here with this group we have amassed today. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I want to start everybody um, by asking for a show of hands. How many of you in your various markets have seen record highs when it comes to snowfall or rainfall or at the very least extreme highs in this past winter that we've just seen finish up? Yeah, it looks like uh, basically everybody except Shannon here in Seattle. Yeah, she says no way. We'll talk about that here as we get going. I'm going to start with uh, Salt Lake City, KUTV, Sterling Polson, the chief meteorologist there. And Sterling, I know you guys have had a really, really rough winter, if I'm not mistaken. Tell me about that and tell me about how that then pertains to the wildfire season we're looking ahead at. Well, you know, this has just been epic. Uh, there's no other word for it. In my uh, 34 years here at this station, uh, we have never seen anything like what we saw this winter. And in fact, after a long, hot summer of 34 days last summer of 100 degrees plus, and even into September, we had, we broke, we tied our all time high record of 107. Who would have ever imagined that just four months later, we would be looking at record snowpack across the state of Utah? And not just the uh, a localized area of snowpack that's above normal, like northern Utah is above normal, southern Utah isn't. The entire state of Utah ended up with 27 plus. And, and in some places in April, we were still adding two to three feet of snow with storms that were developing across the state. And per storm, that was per storm. So, I mean, just incredible amounts of snow. Of course, what we're worried about now is flooding and not necessarily fires, but we're monitoring that as we move through uh, as we've been moving through the month of may so what we uh, what we expect is with wildfires this summer is if and i think we're in uh and so normal now the el nino southern oscillation has gone to neutral so i think what we're going to be looking at is a more normal type of weather pattern for the state of utah which would mean that we won't see 34 days in, uh, of, of 100 degree plus temperatures and uh, I think our, our, our soil moisture is high. We are still, that's still percolating down into the soil as we melt this uh, spring. And uh, the reservoirs are all going to be full across the entire state, which is, uh, hasn't happened in years and years and years. So this is a great summer, I think. The only thing that could happen that could change that is if we end up with another hot, dry summer as we move into August and September, wildfires could increase. But the way it looks right now to me is I think we're going to see a fairly quiet weather, uh, fire weather season because of the amount of moisture that we have in our soil, our plants. And even though we're getting a lot of new vegetation because of that, I think most of that vegetation is going to be very, very wet. Interesting take, Sterling. You have behind you a, a backdrop that shows the devastating impact we've seen from some of the fires in the past. But you're saying, if I can summarize it, that because of the snow and the wetness you've had in Utah this past winter, you expect the fire season to be better, not worse than it has been. Yes, I do. Sterling, thank you very much. Let's go to Reno, Nevada now, where Matt Monroe is the chief meteorologist at uh, KR, 
NV Reno. You have had a huge winter as well. Tell me about that. And then let's talk a little bit about preparations that you guys make in Nevada for the fires. The Tahoe fires have been uh, seen a lot in the past few years. I know you guys have been hit really hard. Talk about that if you would. Uh, first of all, the winter here, kind of like uh, piggybacking on what Sterling said, absolutely epic. He had an epic winter there in the Wasatch, and we had an epic winter here at across the Sierra Nevada. And it's really statewide, too. Of course, that range runs down through California and through western Nevada. And as far as percentages, two to three hundred percent of normal that's up and down the entire range. So that's the northern, central, and in the southern uh, Sierra, upwards of 300%, about three times the normal snowpack. So as far as California is concerned, statewide, it is a record year, the largest snowpack ever in the history of California since recorded history. So we have about 700 inches of snow uh, up on Donner Pass. Just like Sterling, we've had big storms in April as well adding to that. So uh, it's either records or near records at just about every singular point up and down the Sierra Nevada. And that's where the majority of our wildfires come from. Lake Tahoe, obviously at 6,000 feet, about 6,200 feet, a very high alpine lake. That's why they're always in danger. They're surrounded by forest. And in recent years, we've had the drought. So it's been just kind of, they've been dodging the bullet. They had a Caldor fire. That was last year, essentially 2022. That came very, very close to South Lake Tahoe. Uh, this past uh, wildfire season, we had the mosquito fire, and the mosquito fire came within a number of miles to the west of Lake Tahoe. And then luckily, we had four days of rain put that one out. Largest wildfire in California state history, which is in our viewing area north of Reno, the Dixie Fire. Uh, that was just unbelievable. That was July 21st through October 21st, did over a billion dollars in damage and about 1,505 square miles, just absolutely charred. So we're hoping we'd have a repeat of that uh, going forward. But again, we're sitting on tremendous amounts of snowpack, uh, just like Sterling, uh, we're concerned about flooding here. Uh, a lot of that flows into the Truckee River Basin, which comes down in through Reno. We've seen catastrophic flooding in Reno before on years like this. We're hoping we don't have a huge spring melt and then create flooding there. And then, of course, uh, things will eventually dry out. And once they dry out, uh, this could be a delayed wildfire season, but pushing it maybe from June to maybe September, October time frame. And it could be a big wildfire season due to all the undergrowth that's going to be growing uh, tremendously and uh, under all that uh, snowpack. So once that snowpack goes, we get a lot of uh, growth. Then we have a dry summer. El Nino or not, it's going to be a dry summer. And then basically, hopefully, not a huge wildfire season in September, October. But it could be a delayed wildfire season in short and a uh, rather intense wildfire season. Matt, I know you've you've covered weather really all over the country, uh, from what I understand. Yes. And and let me ask you this: Is the rate, the degree of extreme weather that we've seen in this last four or five years, is it more? Is it higher than you've seen in your career around the country? As far as wildfire activity, wildfire, just extreme weather in general, the extreme winters, the extreme yeah. heat, the fires. I mean, I have to say so because it's been, I mean, we're, it's essentially out here, it's been either feast or famine. So we've either gotten just incredible wet seasons or incredibly dry. Fascinating times we're living in. I think we can all agree on that. Let's go to Fresno, California, KMPH, Chief Meteorologist Chris Kuiper. Chris, the numbers out of the state of California are interesting. This past winter, 20% more rain than normal, 56% more snow. We've kept hearing about a drought, but it ended spectacularly with snow in places that we just never seem to see snow. Let me ask you this. I know you guys got a ton of snow at Yosemite National Park. Hit really hard this winter. Uh, tell us about that and tell us about your area, your region, getting ready for wildfire season and what you expect. Well, just to go along with what Matt was saying there, uh, the Sierra Nevada is in just incredible shape as far as the snowpack goes. Most areas of the central Sierra Nevada are reporting 200 to 300 percent of their April 1st average. Many areas at or above record uh, snowpack depths and water content. And so the snowpack in the Sierra Nevada is just outstanding right now. That's obviously going to take a while to melt off, and so we won't see uh, that snow melting off fully until June or even July in some areas. And so also, like Matt was saying, 
I think it could be at least a delayed start to any kind of fire season. Uh, things like the energy release component, which is talking about how dry the, the, the fuels are out there, really low uh, to begin the season, which is what we want to see. Uh, as we dry out in the summertime, naturally, those, the fuels will start to dry out and everything. But it should be a delayed start because everything is just so wet out there right now, record breaking wet. Uh, the one thing is interesting is that I think the grasses uh, in the lower elevations, the foothills or maybe the valley, they're going to be growing kind of nuts because it's been so wet out there. Wildflowers will be great this year as well. But the grasses out there, uh, they're going to be going nuts. And then as it always does in California, it'll dry out by July. So that area might have a little extra fuel or so. But those are those little low foothills or in the valley where you typically don't get those big fires. Uh, the higher elevations where you get those the big fires like the creek fire out here, the camp fire in Northern California, uh, the fuels up there, the pine trees and whatnot, they should be well hydrated for the summertime. And so hopefully that will help at least uh, prevent any kind of major fires. Chris, thank you very much. I want to do another show of hands from you guys because uh, it seems like there's sort of competing theories. One idea being that the, the more moisture, the more snow, uh, the more vegetation, and then when the vegetation dries out late, uh, that becomes fuel for the fire. So let me ask you this, how many of you think we will have a better fire season this summer than we've had in recent years? Show of hands. I'd say grudgingly, <laughs> grudgingly most of you, but, uh, but it looks, it's a split decision. It looks like about half. About half of you think it'll be worse, and about half of you don't think so. Let's go to Portland right now for Chief Meteorologist Dave Seleski from K2. Dave, I haven't seen you for a long time. We worked together way, way back in the day. I, I, I feel like Portland is getting more extreme all the time. Having lived there many years ago, it just seems like there's more ice storms, more snowstorms. It's hotter in the summertime. Has that been your experience? It has been. I mean, certainly in the last uh, 30 years that I've been in this market, yes, you, you, you look at the fact that we've had record-breaking high temperatures. We've had very, very high fire years. Now, last year, 2022, not as bad as 2021, which we had devastating fires in 2021. I'm concerned about 2023 because the potential for seeing wildfires with all the fuel that we're going to have on the, on the ground this summer from all the how wet it's been this winter, that dries out in August and September, which is our peak fire season. We could have some big problems by the end of this summer. You know, I'm thinking back to that uh, wildfire you guys had down along the Columbia River there, where it's in some of those areas in Oregon, especially, and I would also say the state of Washington, it's tough to even get at the fires, uh, let alone douse them with water. And that's something you in the state of Oregon and us in Washington and other places have to deal with, have to prepare for, right? I feel like we're training more, we're preparing more than we ever have for wildfire seasons, but it's so hard to predict, right? The problem here in, in, in Portland and in Western Oregon is what we call an urban wildfire interface, where you have the city of Portland, which is just a few short miles from the Columbia River Gorge, which is a scenic area, a lot of, a lot of trees, a lot of very dry brush. You get a strong east wind developing, and we saw this in 2021, all that smoke and that fire got very close into the Portland, Vancouver area. Some of the outlying towns like Corbett, uh, Troutdale area, they had fires that were literally just two or three miles away from getting into those towns and causing all kinds of problems. Thank you, Dave. We're going to go right down the road about two hours now to Eugene, Oregon, where John Mayer is the chief meteorologist there at KVAL and KMTR. John, welcome. Thank you. It looks like a beautiful day right now in Eugene, Oregon. Let's talk a little bit about the winter you've had, the wildfires you've seen in recent years, and what you think the forecast is. Have you seen fires, for instance, in places where we hadn't seen them in years past? Well, you know, very similar to what we were just talking about. The, the biggest difference that we've been seeing here is all of those fires getting a little bit closer to the more heavily populated areas. That is something that we've been getting here in the past few years. But quite frankly, this is just a very heavily forested area. We're in southwest Oregon. Uh, you, can, you can see the forest out there behind me. You, you add up the Willamette National Forest, the Umpqua National Forest, we're up to about 2.6 million acres 
uh, our three major counties that we cover are about 7.6 million acres. So about a third of our land is national forest. And, and that doesn't account for all of the forest. So this is just an area where this is going to happen. The question is how bad is it going to be? And our past winter, we've been sitting right in that sweet spot. I, I mean, we certainly haven't seen the level of record setting snow or rainfall that we have up and down the rest of the coast, but it has been pretty solid. I mean, we're well above par with our snowpack. We've had some really decent rainfall out there at times, but all told, it's just a question of when we're going to get to that point. And as of this moment, we are primarily talking moderate drought conditions across our region, which is better than most recent years, but kind of sets us up similar to 2021. And our major fire at that point, that was the, the Middle Fork Complex fire. That was our smallest recent major <coughs> fire, but that was still 86,000 acres. So if that's a, a good year, then uh, it looks like that's where we might be heading still. I mean, there are going to be wildfires here. The terrain is uh, horrendous to try to contain a fire that gets started in these forests. It is an uphill battle every single time. And I don't necessarily think it'll be much worse than our, our prior years here in our region. Uh, we've had a, a fairly middling sort of a winter, but it's enough that we're likely going to see something. It's just a question of timing. It's just a matter of when, right, John? Thank you very much. Let's go down the road there to Medford, Oregon, and uh, Holden McCroy is the chief meteorologist at KTVL Southern Oregon. You're just across the border from the uh, the state of California. Looks like a gorgeous day behind you there, Holden. Um, let's talk a little bit, if you would, um, about the winter you've had. What do you think is going to happen this coming summer? understanding of course how unpredictable it is and if we've learned anything so far today it's just that it's hard to tell but what what's it been like where you are and what are you looking for in the upcoming wildfire season so here in medford we're kind of on the boundary between the active weather we've been seeing down across northern california with the atmospheric rivers and also the kind of quiet and lack of rainfall that we've been seeing i'm sure shannon's going to talk about that up towards seattle where actually below average for precipitation. But you can kind of see behind me, this has been most of our winter. We've had areas of clouds, uh, rain, snow. Some areas have really benefited from the snow. Some of our snow packs across the region, including the, uh, the Rogue Valley, the Rogue Basin, Umqua Basin are around 140 to 150% of normal for this state. Down across the border in California, we're near 200%. So we're kind of on the cusp of some areas have done really, really well and others not so much. For example, areas like Klamath Falls out toward the east side is above average for rainfall. Areas down into Siskiyou County, we're about a foot above average for rain down toward Mount Shasta. But here in Medford, we're still about three inches below average. And we're kind of on the cusp between of what we've been seeing as a active uh, pattern this past winter down in California. And then here it's been kind of like right on the edge of that weather. And terrain is a big factor here. So that's why we kind of have some areas that have done really well and others not so much. We have the Siskiyou range that you can see kind of off in the distance behind me and that drains a lot of moisture for these parts. And that's kind of where we see the rain shadow effects across our region as well and kind of reiterating what everyone's been talking about for this upcoming wildfire season. Our snowpacks are really well. We've been relatively cooler than average here across Southern Oregon. And what I think is going to happen is probably what everyone else has been talking about is that fire season is not going to be canceled. It's going to be delayed. And I think it's going to be less intense than previous years. Last year, for example, our fire season wasn't nearly as bad as what we have been seeing in previous years, particularly here in Southern Oregon and the North State. But as we go forward, it's all dependent on if we warm up really fast, because if we warm up here in the past, the next couple of months or so, that's going to dry out that vegetation and we're going to start to see a lot of melting. So it's a matter of when that snowpack melts, how much moisture is still going to be left here uh, toward the valley. But I do think it's going to be more of a grass fire season this year because of all this new growth that we're seeing, kind of like what's right behind me right now. If I'm hearing you right, Holden, getting hot real fast is the enemy this, this coming summer, right? Yeah, exactly. If we can kind of moderate these temperatures, not see a sudden uptick in temperatures like what we saw in 2021 or even 2020, where we quickly got up to 100 degrees. Because here in Medford, we kind of stay in the 40s and 50s in the winter, but then the summer comes and we get hot really fast. 
So if we can kind of hold those triple digit temperatures off until maybe later in the season, I think that we're going to be right at the cusp of rainy season, and that's really going to help us out a little bit. All right, Holden, thank you very much. You know, early on when I asked all of you if you've had record snowfall or rain to raise your hands, I think Shannon here at Como TV in Seattle, Shannon O'Donnell was the only person that didn't, ra didn't raise your hand. It has been fairly moderate uh, in our little corner of the world, hasn't it, Shannon? You know, up here, as you've been hearing, and we're sending all the wet weather this season uh, into California, Nevada, Utah for Sterling, into the Wasatch. Uh, Matt was speaking about that in the Sierra Nevada in Reno, and Holden just spoke to that. He's just to the uh, north of uh, one atmospheric river after the next that has been plowing through California and then moving its way to the desert southwest. So, uh, relatively speaking, we're running a little dry up here. Uh, it's been cold, however. We started the season right before Christmas, uh, the winter season, with some snow here around western Washington. Then it was just kind of chilly for several months, but relatively drier. Shannon, I want to ask you about uh, air quality. You know, I've talked to people around here who said they could not remember in their entire lives uh, more than maybe one or two situations where there was a lot of smoke in the air. And now it feels like we've had that basically every year for the last several years. And at times, uh, we've had the worst air quality in the entire world. That's not what people think about when they think of Seattle. And most of those fires, or a lot of them anyway, aren't even from our region. I know we've had smoke come down from, from Canada and up from California. Is just, this just the new norm in your opinion? Well, had we had a lifespans that uh, went over 100 years, or had we asked some people, you know, that were around here, had memories of living in the 1800s, they might, you know, speak differently to that. Thankfully, we have some <coughs> from the 1800s when people were just starting to really settle here in the Pacific Northwest. And Mark Twain very famously uh, visited the Northwest in 1895. And I was quoted, I just looked it up to make sure I got it right out of the Tacoma Tribune this morning. He said, your scenery is out of sight. And he was, a, you know, as usual, play on words with Mike, Mark Twain, Twain because he thought it was lovely around here, but he couldn't see anything because we happened to be full of smoke. Uh, that summer of 1895 when he was visiting. And based on the records we do have from Native Americans and the early settlers, and of course, uh, we don't have the information, the wealth of information that we do nowadays with social media and all of the different uh, ways of gathering that, that we do now, but based on the information we have from back then, we used to get a pretty regular smoke season around here. You know, it would, it would ebb and flow, and it was well known up here in the Northwest that that would happen in certain summers. And then we really settled the West Coast, certainly in the 1920s through the 1970s and thought, aha, we're here. We have all this technology. We can suppress these fires. We had airplanes. We had all kinds of new technology to tamp down that fire <coughs> and thought we had it handled. And really, from a lot of the research that's going on at the University of Washington and whatnot, kind of allowed all of that undergrowth to really get going and get out of control such that when we get a wildfire now they can be pretty explosive whether you've had a, a dry season you know we saw that in california in the last 10 years with these terrible terrible fire seasons same for up here in, in puget sound um our worst fire seasons that i remember in the last few years were 2018 and 2020 with lots of smoke and they were fairly regular water years uh, it was more of the short-term patterns that would happen, the synoptic and the mesoscale patterns that would happen and set up in the summer where you'd get a big ridge of high pressure, say, sitting in eastern Washington, weeks of the uh, offshore flow, the Cascadia winds pushing all of that smoke and that dry, hot air in Puget Sound. Those were the really terrible fire seasons for us. Uh, sometimes you get monsoons that pop up here late July and August. And it's really hard to tell right now if that's going to happen, if that's going to be the pattern. We get the monsoons breaking out here. We get a bunch of lightning and all of a sudden our fire season's off and running, whether we had a dry uh, winter or not. So there are some things that are still unforeseen that will happen later this summer that makes it hard to call what kind of fire season we're going to have. Thank you very much. I want to head down to Boise, Idaho right now. KBOI Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham. Roland, um, I guess one of the things that strikes me is we want to predict, we try to predict, you're there in an area that gets a ton of snow, you get some really hot temperatures in the summertime, but it really is anybody's guess what's going to happen, right? It really is. Uh, this year, I wish I could say that we had a ton of snow, but we've been just right there above the average. Our snowpack this year is averaging between 130 
to some of the mountain ranges to the south of us because of the proximity of the storms tracking down into Nevada, California, and Utah. Some of the southern regions are tracking about 200% of normal snowpack. So we've been kind of like on the outer fringe of all of these storms as they've been primarily favoring California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona. So we've been on the outer fringe. Now, one of the things for us is a real dictator of what happens with our fire season is the temperature readings. Uh, our average summers, we get about 10 days per year, temperatures at or above 100 degrees. Last summer, we had temperature readings of 100 degrees that exceeded 25 days. So it was a very hot, dry summer. And yet uh, the fire season really wasn't that bad for us here in, in the gem state. It was pretty bad elsewhere, but here, it, I don't know if you guys know, Boise is home of the National Interagency Fire Center, NIFC. And so they're the ones who control and send resources out to all of the other states to battle the fires. But we are at the crossroads of all of the fires that range from Vancouver, Washington, Oregon, all the way down to central Southern California. Those fires get caught up in that westerly flow. The smoke gets caught up and we just end up drowning in smoke here. So it's really bad for us here. But the fire season itself wasn't that bad. Our snowpack is about average or a little bit above average. And I think the true dictator of what happens with what kind of a fire season you have is how do how does the um, how do the residents interact with the natural resources? Because a lot of our fires are started by chains on trailers, by people out in the backcountry, by things uh, that are sometimes out of our control. And also lightning is a huge predictor of fire season for us. And last year we just didn't have a lot of thunderstorms. It was just so hot and dry, but fortunately we kind of uh, scathed away without getting a lot of fires ignited in our state. It's so fascinating to me just up the road, Sterling in Salt Lake is drowning in snow. <laughs> Not that far away is, is Boise and you guys didn't quite get as much as you like to and would normally get. I want to go to uh, NBC Montana, which is a regional network in Montana that covers Missoula, Butte, Kalispell, Bozeman, Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster. Thank you for your patience, Brooke. Let me ask you, it looks like, uh, uh, is that snow behind you? Is there still snow on the ground? <laughs> There is still snow on the ground. You know, Missoula recorded 111 consecutive days with at least one inch of snow on the ground. That's the third longest streak since 1902. But mountain snowpack is still running about 5 to 15 percent below normal. Now, naturally, we're going to make that up because of these spring snowstorms that keep moving through. As when we look forward, Last year, looking back first, last year we were primed for a bad season, but we did have a lot of rain that moved through in June and July. So despite the record heat in August, it was a pretty tame season for us. If we see that repeat itself this year, then things might be okay. But going into 2023, uh, much of the Northern Rockies, we are already under moderate drought conditions. Parts of the Bitterroot and Lolo National Forest and the Beaverhead National Forest are already in severe drought conditions. So really only time will tell for us. Thank you, Brooke. And, you know, as I look at where you are and I, and I look at uh, some of the other places around here, uh, and then I look at Miles Muzio in Bakersfield, California, and look behind him, the beautiful blue sky and sunshine. He's standing in the shade of a tree there. We realize why people move to California. Miles, let's talk about uh, let's talk about California. I know it gets really hot there in the summertime, but you also have high elevations that get plenty of snow. How does that interact with each other uh, for the fire season? Well, just this last September, we had a high temperature of 115 degrees. That's an all-time record for September. But uh, this past winter has been just uh, epic, like everybody has said. We had, uh, we just ended March, and that was the fifth consecutive cooler and wetter month uh, in a row. That, that's the last time that happened was in 1998. So it's unusual to have consecutive cold and wet winters. But uh, this past uh, winter, we had 16 storms. Uh, we've had 13 atmospheric rivers. We've had two uh, bomb cyclones. And so right now we're setting at about 170% uh, of normal precipitation. But up in the southern Sierra, uh, we currently are 300, a full 300% of normal. But the funny thing is, is that not that long ago, 
uh, we were in an exceptional drought. As recently as New Year's Day, uh, 2023, it was an exceptional drought. Then in a period of only about six weeks, we went from the worst kind of drought to no drought at all. And so now we're, we're doing just fine. But it's very similar to what happened in 2017. So that's the analog to where we are right now. Uh, we're coming, We the most recent drought was about two years and two months from beginning to end here in Bakersfield. But in the last decade, we had a full five-year drought, which was a big, big deal. Uh, there were all sorts of special uh, uh, problems that we had. The governor had to do special uh, orders to, to uh, try to mitigate the, the drought. And it ended as well, very, very uh, abruptly. In January of 2017, we went from exceptional drought to no drought at all in a period of about six weeks. So I decided to go back and look at the 2017 wildfire season. How did that fare after doing pretty much the same thing we're doing now? Turned out that in 2017, it was the worst fire year to that point. Uh, 2018 and 2020 was actually a little bit worse. We had about 9,500 individual fires, uh, about $18 billion damage, and 47 lost lives, including uh, the, the big fire down in Santa Barbara and Ventura, the Thomas Fire, which uh, burned 281 acres. Of course, what always happens is you have all this water, and then it causes the floods as the snow melts in the summer, and then you have all the vegetation. And uh, then everything just burns in the hot uh, summer that we had. In fact, that very year, 2017, in September, we had uh, two days in a row of 111 degrees for high temperatures and a total of 67 triple digit days in Bakersfield in 2017, right after the big drought ended with all of the rain that we had, very similar to what we have now. So I'm anticipating this is gonna be a similar situation. We're gonna probably have a pretty big wildfire season around uh, much of the Southern Central California after all of the snow and the rain that we've had. It's interesting as it pertains to the, the long drought in California, it's like, be careful what you wish for, right? All of a sudden, up, you're up to your neck in snow and there pre presents a whole different list of problems. Hey, well, you guys, this has been fascinating for me. I guess uh, my takeaways, uh, it's been a tough winter a wet and snowy winter for many of uh, your markets. Um, I think it, it seems like a lot of you are predicting a potential tough wildfire season, but probably a little later than it normally happens. Uh, and of course, as always, we know it is almost impossible to predict really how it's going to go. We thought this last year might be a tough wildfire season up here in the Seattle and the state of Washington. It wasn't as bad as it had been. So we'll have to see what happens. But I want to thank all of you for your expertise and uh, for the job you do and the work you do. And uh, thank you so very much. John there flashing that KVAL coffee mug to get a little free advertising. I caught that. Listen, you guys, thank you very much. I appreciate all your help. Um, I'm Eric Johnson reporting from Seattle. Thank you for tuning in.